praise the name of the Lord. Greetings to all who are following from around the world and my blessings to everyone here. Please help me honor Pastor Daly and his wonderful wife. Thank you. Thank you. And to all in the studio, the Lord bless you. It remains an honor to be a part of what God is doing and I pray that God will visit us in this conference in Jesus name we release the sound of the heavens the sound of creation Yahweh is here we release the sound of the heavens the sound of creation Yahweh is here We cry holy, holy, holy Unto Yeshua Shekinah is here Yahweh, Yahweh Eh, 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 eh. Yahweh, Yahweh Yahweh, Yahweh Hallelujah Let's lift our voices in one minute In the studio and around following Just cry for the spirit of revelation The spirit of revelation Paul prayed for the church And he asked that our hearts be illuminated Flooded with light that we may know. Lift your voice and pray. Shalibara koske branda gatosiada. Shaleka baruda side balada balakosia. Hallelujah. Please take it high for me. There's, there's a song that has been in my heart, Pastor Daly. Ask and I'll give the nations to you, O oh Lord. That's the cry of my heart. Distant shores and the islands will see your life as it rises on us. One more time. Ask and I'll give the nations to you, O oh Lord. That's the cry of my heart. Distant shores and the islands will see your love. Help us, Spirit of the Living God. Grant us grace tonight in the name of Jesus. Seated, thank you. Thank you very, very much. I came here with joy in my heart. I also came here with a burden in my spirit. It's an honor, Pastor Dele. Thank you so much. It truly is an honor to be a contributor to help build the body. This has been my passion for many years to see that all together as a body that we become matured as far as spiritual things are concerned and um, I don't know how far I'll be able to cover in this this conference but I pray that God will grant us grace wherever we stop that that will be fine for this time I have a course content is it alright if we write there is a course content for I'm I'm really I'm really not not interested in preaching as far as this conference is concerned. I think the idea is to communicate these truths and to really um, give it the justice it demands to get into our spirits. Hallelujah. And so I divided my my session into three and um, 
we'll try to take the first part tonight and then in the morning then we'll wrap up in the evening it was just an attempt by the spirit of god to continue where pastor poju pastor godman and you know all of the ministrations that have come before me number one is the assignment the assignment i hope that we'll be able to cover a thorough understanding of kingdom advancement the mandate of the church if god grants us grace we'll be able to look at um, three very important aspects of the assignment number one is understanding the cosmos number church this system that god built himself number three is understanding our corporate mandate as believers I really believe that this is a very major issue in the body of Christ because when the assignment is not thoroughly understood there would be lots of spiritual activities happening but believers will not be built believers will not be edified and the kingdom would not advance so the assignment number two the second part is called doctrine we are going to examine doctrine the mystery of stature and maturity doctrine that will be the second part here we are going to be redefining terminologies that have been abused in the body of christ either due to ignorance and then i hope that we'll be able to look at the pillars of the christian faith on that doctrine that the only way believers truly mature is doctrine and if we desire to see a mature church we must reintroduce back to the body of christ more than personalized dealings more than visionary experience there must be a restoration of doctrine doctrine is the mystery that is responsible for the stature and the maturity of the body hallelujah um, and it is also the cure to heresies the cure to imbalances in the body it's called doctrine so we'll look at that hopefully in the morning and then the last part of this as god grants us grace i would like to wrap up by examining a bit on the coming move of god i think it's important that we we have a prophetic approach to what we are dealing what is god doing this present truth what is he saying now would we'll look at god's end time agenda the mystery of enoch and elijah there are two spiritual systems that are signposts they signify something in the spirit as far as the move of god is concerned and then I hope that we'll be able to look at the ministry of the Holy Spirit, if that is possible. We cannot talk about the global harvest and the end time agenda of God without ignoring the Holy Spirit, without involving the Holy Spirit and giving him his place. It was the Holy Spirit who birthed the church and the Holy Spirit is called the Lord of the harvest. It's not only comforter it's a name that we have even forgotten you know he's called the lord of the harvest the lord of the harvest is not an angel the lord of the harvest is not jesus jesus is the reason for the harvest the lord of the harvest is the spirit of god and then probably if god grants us grace we'll look at the ministry of power as an end time strategy so we have a lot to cover um let me apologize in advance wherever this is a school so whatever i'm not able to cover please i'd like you to hold on to pastor Dele's um, garment and pursue him diligently he's a veteran as far as the exegesis of scripture is concerned so he will be able to do justice to that father help us in the name of jesus we have come to learn we have come as students in the school of the spirit we have come laying our pride our prejudices with our hearts open to hear you speak to us we are ready to grow 
we are ready to be built we are ready to be chiseled like living stones so that we can fit accurately into this structure we pray in the name of Jesus that you will grant us grace grant us grace abundance of grace in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen so let's let's start with the assignment while while I sat back there listening to Pastor Dele share I was already very blessed you know when you read Acts chapter 1 very powerful charge you gave sir All right you could just reduce the volume a bit so that it doesn't distract thank you in Acts chapter 1 you see the Bible lets us know all through the life of Jesus the disciples did not really have an opportunity to understand the full scope of what he came to do are we together now even though Jesus taught in his earth work he taught them on the fundamentals of the kingdom but because they were not filled with the Holy Spirit there were things they could not bear Jesus himself said it I have many other things to tell you some of those many things was what he spent 40 days telling them you understand now he said I have many things to tell you but ye cannot bear them now how be it when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you and then some of the things I said that you did not understand he will bring back to your remembrance many times you will hear them remember they will recall certain things Jesus said and did but it's important for us to understand the assignment because not understanding our corporate mandate as believers not understanding where we are coming from and where we are going to it's it's is one of the reasons why there is a lot of confusion in the body of Christ there is an old story that predates our existence we came in the middle of history and it's only intelligent that we look back to be able to glean by the spirit what happened what is this all about church services what are they all about miracles what are they all about breakthroughs nothing was supposed to be celebrated in isolation everything was supposed to find its credence when and if connected to kingdom so you don't just celebrate breakthroughs miracles prophecy healing the challenge today is we have cut them away and we 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 have not connected them to kingdom so whilst we celebrate them we learn about them we find out that it is not ultimately leading to kingdom advance rather in many regards is just the promotion of flesh and the agenda of men are we together now so what is this all about what is our going to church about do we have to go to church what is the preaching about? Why will a man leave his career and leave everything that seems to represent his self-worth in the name of answering a call? What, what is the call about? Now he claims he has some conviction or he was sent by God and would risk his life, put himself in trouble, his family in trouble for the rest of his life over... Uh, advocacy of a message that sometimes looks very confusing over a God who doesn't seem to show up and say thank you and dies in the process missionaries have died advocating a message that many are yet to understand there is something called the reproach of Christ and many people have left the excellency of the palace to bear upon them that reproach what is this all about please pay attention i came from a very strong evangelical background just like pastor daly was sharing and in all honesty um of course we're trained to just love god we, i saw very sincere people who were passionate about missions and all of that but we didn't have a very intelligent education as to what christianity was about and did you know pastor Pick a believer at random, in no particular order, even a worker, and ask him, what is this about? He would tell you it's about the advancement of the agenda of a church. He would tell you, I do this because I love my pastor. He may tell you, I do this because I love Jesus. 
He will tell you, I do this because I, I just want to make heaven. All kinds of reasons. The, now, I'm speaking to the body of Christ and I'm speaking with every sense of humility and regard to the body. But the extent of cluelessness that the average believer has as to the motivation behind everything we do in the kingdom is the reason why we easily fall prey to the devil and the reason why there is no sustainability in the things that we do the bible talks in luke chapter one um dr luke was speaking and he spoke about the things that are most surely believed things that were done from a standpoint of persuasion and conviction now theologically speaking you know that um, the Bible Genesis 1 verse 1 the Bible says in the beginning it was just a framework to now help us begin to understand God's program in time it says in the beginning not from the beginning God created the heavens and the earth we do not exactly know what moment in time that happened and we do not even know what happened before that time but one thing we know for sure is that there has we are in the middle of many dispensations past and there are many dispensations ahead of us the bible starts in the middle of a story and the bible ends with the beginning of another one that's that's something this is this is this is truth from scripture are we together so in the beginning god created that was not the first thing he was doing as god there were other things he had been doing what they are we don't know we just know that he created the heavens and the earth that was not the first time otherwise he would not be god there were other the activities that he was doing before that time the bible does not give us the luxury of having a thorough knowledge but we know one thing for sure. The Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. It does not directly give us an opportunity to know why he did it the first time. Because Adam was not in the picture when that happened. Why he created the heavens and the earth. It was not for an, an accommodation for himself. He was already existing. If he created the heavens and the earth, he was not living in either realms. Heaven is his throne, not his house. Uh -uh. are we together now yes so the bible says then it jumps to verse 2 theologically speaking it's called the gap theory and attempts to explain what happened the bible is written in summary so sometimes you may not really see the time lag between genesis 1 verse 1 genesis 1 verse 2 where ages apart the bible now says there was darkness there was void verse 2 it says darkness was upon the face of the deep now this darkness we see in many scriptures i don't want to go into that now because there's a lot for us to cover you will see that genesis 1 verse 2 was a product of the judgment of lucifer it didn't just happen because according to the character of god everything he creates is good so he couldn't have created a heaven and an earth that is good and then all of a sudden we see darkness it was a system because flood in scripture is always symbolic of judgment waters talk of people waters talk of abundance flood always in scripture talks of judgment so when the enemy comes comma like a flood in judgment the spirit of god will raise a standard against him you understand now so the flood there came as a result of the judgment of lucifer when job we know again theologically that the book of genesis people argue that it predated job other theologians agree that it was immersed between genesis 1 and the last um, we're not really interested we know that it's somewhere somewhere between genesis 1 and then the last book of genesis but then the bible tells us that there was a man called job who feared the lord and eschewed evil tragedy fell upon that man and in the height of his frustration the bible said he summoned god very dangerous statement that a man can summon god and god came chapter 38 and verse 1 when god finally came through a whirlwind to job 
there was a very deep discussion. It says that when he came, he began to ask Job, and there was a discussion. Let's look at the first four verses. Am I boring you already? This is a minister's conference, so wherever we stop, we stop. If we, if we get somewhere, we just pray in tongues, and we go to bed. Verse 2. Who is he that darkened counsel by words without knowledge? Do you know what this is? God was saying, Job, you've been saying a lot of nonsense from the standpoint of ignorance. I've been listening to you patiently. Now I have come. You have compelled a discussion. And he asked him a few questions. Verse 3. He said, guard up your loins like a man, for I will demand of thee and answer me. Now, this is a communication of the mysteries of creation. Question 1. Where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? You don't find that in Genesis 1. No, that was not there. Uh -uh. This was the creation before the recreation that we call creation. There was an actual foundation laying ceremony. Where is that foundation today? Because geography tells us the earth is round. And here we see, please keep that scripture, that there is a real foundation. Declare! If you have understanding. Next question. It says, Who laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest? Or who stretched the line upon it? Verse 6. It says, Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? And who laid the cornerstone thereof? A ceremony happened that day. Verse 7. This is a ceremony that happened when the earth was founded. It says, The morning stars... I don't want to go into discussing who the morning stars are. And the sons of God are. Wait to keep that scripture there. Jesus had not yet died. And there was still that mention of sons of God. Who were they? <laughs> ah, goodness. I'm sorry, I don't sound sarcastic. I mean, I'm just amazed at the ignorance in the body. Do you know, the more we know God, honestly, it should bring us back to our knees. Because a lot of the nonsense we pride ourselves in, while we continue to pride ourselves, the realm of the spirit is surprised at the vastness of our ignorance and yet the pride that follows that ignorance. Look at this scripture. Look at it. It's in your Bible. That there was a day, brothers and sisters, we never, there were no men when God was recreating the earth. Genesis 1 verse 2. It was only the spirit of God and the voice of God. Light be, light be, light be until Adam came. But God is saying before this your story, there was another one. You need to know this to know why Satan is looking for you. You need to know this to know why he's bringing barrenness. Then you will, not, you will now know why he gave you an anointing to heal. If you do not understand the story, you will be in the middle of a history you don't understand. So why is he giving us power? Why does he want all men saved? You see why evangelism is not effective? Because there is no history that supports, that provides the power and the force. There is an old story that we must understand. Are we blessed? You are brooding over every darkness. You are causing light to... One more time. You are brooding yeah, over every darkness. You are causing Keep that scripture there. So the Bible says, when the morning stars sang together, these were still people who were worshipping the Lamb. So when you have this revelation and you worship God, you will know it's a privilege. Because way before the agenda of our dispensation came, there were people nobler than us as far as the quality of their creation is concerned. These angels, I, will, I hope I have the time, I will teach you the material of creating angels was not dust. No, angels were created from quantized light. It's in your Bible. The material of their creation is light. Lucifer being a cherub, he was specially crafted. The, the garden of Eden was a similitude of the throne that was created for Lucifer because his assignment, man, the assignment of Jesus to our dispensation was Lucifer's assignment to the dispensation of the inhabitants. 
thou was in Eden, the garden of the Lord. It's in your Bible. Lucifer, the first occupant of the garden of Eden was not Adam. No, it was Lucifer's garden. So you understand the vendetta between Lucifer and mankind. There is an old story. Lucifer wanted what God gave man because he wanted a situation where he could run a parallel government. We've thought that Lucifer wanted to dethrone God. No, no, no. Mm -mm. Lucifer was not looking for an ability to dethrone God. You want to know the agenda of Lucifer? Look at the system of the Antichrist. It does not seek to dethrone. It seeks to run a parallel government. So Lucifer never wanted to dethrone God, but he wanted to run a government so you could choose either God or him. And don't downplay that agenda because he led one third of the angels. They believed that agenda was possible. Lucifer is someone who there is a lot of lessons to learn from. Oh dear, I wish, I wish that um, this was a night vigil. The last, the first thing we hear about Lucifer after the judgment is that he was cast down to the earth. Humiliated. This man landed the earth and was roaming around. The next time we see Lucifer, he had the keys of the earth and he was talking to Jesus, bow to me. You should respect such a man. I drove you down from heaven and just in a few years, you have deceived the entire kings and made them loyal to you. And you come to Jesus and say, this is the progress report. From the time I fell from heaven till now, I have gotten the keys. All the glories of the world are now under my influence. What did he tell the kings? If we do not understand this, I will teach that in the last session, the coming move of God. We must understand the name of Satan, Satan, and that name, devil. These are names that if we do not understand the seductive deception that the spirit of the Antichrist is bringing over the body. Intelligent kings gave up their will, their mind, and they said, we will bow to you. Satan fell from heaven, humiliated, roaming around the earth for so long when the Greek creation in Genesis 1 verse 2 and 3 was happening, he was a witness. It was not only God alone who was speaking. Satan was a witness. He was seeing it. There's no time I would have shown you again that among all the beings who had fallen from heaven, Satan is only one of them. Satan is not the only person who had offended God. There are many other offenders. We do not know what dispensation and what their offense were, but we know today they are still bound in everlasting chains. Satan is not one of them. That means they are even worse than him. And the Bible says they were bound for the sake of the elect. It's in your Bible. Wow. Then you will understand why the lake of fire was created. The lake of fire is part of God's kingdom. I hope you know. That's where Satan will be casted there. It can't be his kingdom. The lake of fire is part of, is God's invention. It's part of his justice system. Let's pray in the spirit in one minute. Shilarus kiba rando shalakros kiba diada. Pragados eziana haskabalakos yada. Mighty God. Masobra tasile heshene katosia katabra. Skadabrande galekosia da balatusia. Shila briga di balatusia. Honestly, Pastor Dele, I believe that one of the things we must begin to press for, as we see the clock ticking to the coming of Jesus, we must cry for the spirit of revelation in reality. Not so that we can preach sermons and make a name for ourselves. Believe me when I tell you there is a lot of ignorance. Occultists know what I'm telling you. Many people who have studied other religions. What do you think? Now, ah, is it safe to say this? The Bible talks about the book of Enoch. Now, uh, please, 
our online community, this is just a communication because it's in scripture so that we don't have people who now misunderstand what we're saying. The book of Enoch is a book that the Bible itself recognizes. Enoch is the seventh man from creation. Are we together now? I will teach that in the last session. He is one of the two signs that must happen before the coming of Christ. Is the mystery of Enoch and the mystery of Elijah. They were not just men. They were spiritual systems that signify something. Are we together now? You cannot understand the coming move of God until you understand Enoch and Elijah. Malachi tells us before the coming of the great and terrible day of the Lord, Elijah will come again. Elijah is the spirit that always foreruns revival. Wherever God is about to show up in a city, Elijah must precede. He has an assignment to restore the altars of the Lord. That would deal with it. I'm just running ahead of myself. We have a serious discussion here. But I'm saying that the powers and the principalities that we attempt to rebuke and do all of this, they are aware of this. You see, the word exousia, when I teach on the ministry of power, the word exousia, there are four words that are used to signify power and authority. One is called iskos, one is called kratos, the other is called dunamis, and the last is called exousia. Dunamis is the outworkings of the power of the spirit. Exousia is the outworking of the authority that comes through enlightenment. So there is something that leads to exousia. There is something that leads to dunamis. Are we together now? Merely just confessing scripture and just saying in the name of Jesus, I command this devil to go just because Jesus said in my name. If that were that easy, there would be no need for a 40 days lecture. Because he already gave them the name. And they went and returned back and said, even the devils. Now he was teaching them something. Why teach them doctrine again? When you had given them the name. Before he died though. And they returned back with that power. So there is an old story. The first occupant. That was, that was in Eden. The garden of the Lord. He was perfect in beauty. People say Lucifer was a musician. Well, Lucifer was not a musician. No. Lucifer's assignment was the light bearer. This is the Bible. Son of the morning. His name was given. He was the light bearer. The custodian of the mysteries of the kingdom. It was an assignment. Because you see, your age in the realm of the spirit or in the throne room is measured by how much light you emit. Which is a product of how much of the face of God you have seen. What did the Bible say when we behold him? We are changed. It's not a principle to this. It's an old principle that anybody who beholds God, you have to be changed. Now, by reason of Lucifer's assignment, the opportunity to have that frequent contact with God who is light. And it was on the strength of his illumination that he said, I will exalt myself above the stars of God. I will be like the most high. And the Bible called that contemplation iniquity until iniquity was found not sin iniquity rebellion are we together now and then there was war in heaven and you know all of that all of that and then now god put man by the way let me say this the garden of eden is still intact very intact the garden of eden was not in this three-dimensional realm the earth as we know it now has been um, it's lost its original design. The spiritual architecture of earth that included Eden is not what we see now. We are matured and spiritual enough to know that. Because when you read the book of Revelation, Eden is still there. The tree of life is still there. Are we together now? The only tree that we no longer see is the tree of the knowledge of, the good, of good and evil because by that time we've all made our choices. So we have chosen life. And so there will not be need for that other tree again. Those trees, trees in the Bible were not just, they are symbolic of man. He shall be like a tree planted by the streams of water. Are we together now? Yes. When we understand this, then we'll understand why satan came the bible tells us that when god created adam 
and Eve. He gave them instructions and he left them. He would come in the cool of the day. It was not a difficult thing to interface with the realm of the spirit as we have now. That you have to pray and cry for visions. and No, no, no. It was not like that. God would come in the cool of the day and fellowship with man. And the Bible says Satan. Now notice, according to spiritual ranking, Satan did not have the authority to confront Adam. We never see a command. No. Even Satan had to respect that spiritual organogram. He came to Adam through Eve. And today he still wants to get the Adam, the Christ, through his bride, the Eve of that Adam. That's why Satan continues to come to us, the church, because we are the Eve of that second Adam. Are we together now? And the same strategy he used to over Eve is what is still coming now. The seduction that leads to deception. Did God really say? That is the theme. Did God really say? He does not say it now by speaking. He says it by using situations and circumstances. But it's still the same question. Did God really say you will rise? Did God really say the church will grow? He will use things. When you understand the strategy of the devil, Paul said, do not be ignorant of the devil's devices. Is the word stratomai. His methodologies. So there was, there is an old story. Even Satan is called that old serpent. There was a lamentation in heaven that that old serpent had been casted to the earth. He said, woe to the inhabitants of the earth. Look how dangerous this guy was. That when he fell to the earth, there was a lamentation. They said, those in the earth, I, I really feel sorry for you because someone, a stranger has come to your domain. And the Bible said he is angry. So anger, this thing called anger, is a revealer of the presence of spirits. It's not just the issue of attitude. Uh -uh. There is a dimension of anger that normal men should not have. If your anger exceeds that dimension, it calls for the introduction of the power of God in your life. Because ordinary men do not have that level of anger. Now you understand where terrorists get their empowerment you should humans by default cannot stretch beyond certain levels of brutality it is not given to men watch an accident happen they won't ask you whether you're a christian or you're a muslim everybody comes those are men but when you see a man who can kill you and butcher you and not feel anything someone who fell with anger is at work in this system we really need to know what we are after remember we are looking at the assignment is it true that the assignment is to build a building as important as that is? Is it true that the assignment is to get membership as important as that is? Is it true that the assignment is to look good and teach well and hold conventions and conferences? Is that really it? Does it sound like it to you now? No. When man fell, there are three levels, pastor. Please, while you are sitting, just be praying for me. Let me just contain myself and be able to constructively communicate something this night. When man fell, there are three levels of perception that God designed in man. The highest was supposed to be discernment, followed by reason, then emotions, in that order. If you ever switch them, there will be a consequence on man. Discernment should be his highest faculty of perception, followed by reason based on principles and then emotions. For as long as that order is honored, the devil will never be able to penetrate man. His assignment is to find a way of switching because there is a weakness with emotions, the impulses of feelings. I need to say that so that you will know what happened to Eve. Are we together now? Yes. Satan was not merely talking to her. Uh -uh. He was seeing something in the realm of the spirit he wanted to disconfigure. Because until that happens, he will not be able to attack her. And he used words. Discernment. Then reason. 
based on the logic of scripture and the principles of life than emotions. Now, emotions are very powerful. Are we together? They connect us to people. They connect us to principles. They connect us to our environment. But emotions have a weakness. You should not express them at a moment for too long. They have a consequence. So they are short term. If you understand this, Satan switched it. That was the idea behind a concept that is hardly understood in the body called covenant. Covenant was a system God invented to ensure man remains stable even though he is an emotional being. So he created a system that overrides emotions so that you are sponsored by another framework that is more than what you feel, more than what you think. Are you seeing now? Because if you depend on emotions, the day you love God, you may pray. The day you don't love God, you see that? Covenant service, service in the house of God is called covenant because your emotions can make you feel bad because of cold and you won't come to church. But a covenant is a system that was invented to help override your emotions and maintain consistency. It's not about Old or New Testament. No, it's more than that. So man fell. Let's, let's hurry up. Let's make sense of this. Man fell. Watch this. The Bible says when man fell, the Lord God, he called him the talking spirit. That he came in the cool of the day and did not see Adam. God did not find Adam. Where can I hide from your presence? But now he's not seeing Adam. Because look at the question God is asking. Adam, where are you? And Adam said, I heard your voice, but I hid because I was naked. He says, who told you? You have begun to listen. Someone has introduced an information. Who told you you were naked? You see now, the solical realm, there has been an activation of your emotions. Who did this? Who told you? And he said, the woman that you have kept with me. Now, let me share something very powerful. In the kingdom, you transfer power by transferring responsibility. When the Bible says, do everything without complaining or arguing, it's a very powerful advice. Do you know the moment he transferred responsibility to the woman, God did not talk to him again. He said, woman, now that this man has transferred authority to you, if the woman kept quiet, she will become the head of man immediately. Yes. This is Bible. Everything I'm telling you is scripture. Woman, what is this that you have done? The woman now said, the serpent. He beguiled me. You see where Satan became the... She transferred authority by blaming. Now, Satan did not complain. That's what made him the God of this world. So you now see why Jesus stood before Pontius Pilate. And when they were talking to him, what did he do? Yes, sir. Satan became the God of this world. Now, watch this. God banished man out of Eden. Eden was not destroyed. There's no record in scripture that Eden was burnt with fire. No. He banished man out of Eden to now what we call our earth. And two things protected Eden. One, the cherubims. Two, the flaming sword. That means it was not just a natural place that needed gates like this. I told you Eden is still intact. Eden was lifted from our domain. And all we had was this, our stratosphere and this, our atmosphere. Eden is still intact. Hallelujah. Man now began to walk through his senses. Now, let me explain something very briefly. And then we'll now begin to make sense of everything I'm saying. Don't forget what we're dealing with, the assignment. All of this drama I'm acting is to get us to really understand the assignment. This is where our message corporately comes out from. Are we blessed? Yeah. Until Adam and Eve... There was no other dispensation recorded in Bible where reproduction happened. No. Every time God wanted to multiply, it was through creation, not reproduction. 
our dispensation would be the first to see that invention. Are we together now? So Satan, in all the archives of knowledge he had, never knew that it was a possibility that there could be multiplication through reproduction. Listen very carefully and you understand why barrenness. Why all of these things? So that it is on the strength of that knowledge that anointing can flow through you. When you are praying for a barren woman, you are not just attesting to the fact that you are a man of God. You are coming from the standpoint of intelligence and the realm of the spirit knows that you are not just a dispenser of power blindly. You are coming full of knowledge. Are we together now? Yes. Satan was happy because according to him, he believed there would only be two people on earth. So his focus was who else will be created. He did not know that a strategy was now put in man. Are we together now? Suddenly, the Bible says, and Adam knew his wife. Satan began to see the stomach of a woman protrude. What is in that stomach? He had never seen reproduction. And all of a sudden, she gave birth to Cain. You now see what made Satan come to Cain. Cain was innocent. What did Cain do? Another entity. So if a woman can produce another entity, that means in a short time, the earth will be filled with bodies that the Spirit of God can rest upon and they can fulfill God's agenda. And Satan said, let's get into that man. Then... Abel now came and Satan said, no, Cain, I have to walk through you to kill Abel. What is the whole agenda? It's a depopulation agenda. Does that make sense to you what is happening on earth? That a depopulation agenda is not some group. It's an old agenda. Satan had tried through dispensations and failed. Satan hates men because men have bodies. A body has thou prepared for me. Find out how many people died because a child was born. Moses. Find out how many people died. Are we together? Listen, this is helping to now make sense that the thing which is, is the thing which has been. So when you see, whether it is terrorism, whatever it is, you now, when you are praying, you pray from the lens of this intelligence that we just found ourselves in the middle of history. This thing it's an old story. It's not about the foundation in your family. That story is deeper than that. It's not about the devil wanting to make you poor or not wanting you to have a child. That's, that is a little piece of the old story. And Cain killed Abel. When he killed Abel, now, theologically speaking, they say Cain and Abel are twins because the Bible just said Adam knew his wife once and we see these two come, right? But then the Bible now says again that Adam knew his wife again. Very dangerous statement. That was a discovery that was going to shock Satan. That this potential to give birth is theoretically infinite. That made the woman dangerous. You now see why Satan looks for women conduct deliverance for 10 people eight of them will be women it is not oh dear i testify i testify that your goodness is real your goodness is real i testify for a very long time i wondered why the devil will not let women rest is it just because they have a womb? Is it because they are beautiful? Is it because men pursue them? No, I found the reason. Satan, listen carefully to what Jesus said or God said. He said, the seed shall bruise the head. Are we together now? Yes. There's something about women and the anger that their presence creates to the gate of hell. No wonder the first person to see the resurrected Christ was a woman. The first person to see Christ resurrected was a woman. 
let's get back to our discussion the bible now says adam knew his wife again and she bore him a child and he named the child seth he says and men began again to call upon the name of the lord now but watch this the bible now said this guy called cain even though he killed his brother even though he talked with god he did not change that's a lesson i can spend all night there that just talking with god alone does not equal transformation cain was talking with god an encounter that very few people have had yet it did not change him proximity to the word proximity to spiritual activities does not produce transformation it means we have to invent another formula such that all those who come close to us as they are listening and they are in church for many years we shouldn't make that assumption that just because they are hearing the word of god they are changing the first person we see as a man talking with god directly in rebellion and you know what the first statement was it's not i worship you it's not i love you your majesty the first word that came from man to god aside from adam and eve is am i my brother's keeper here's where the issue of relationship came am i my brother's keeper why should i have any business with my brother provided it does not support my interest this is the book of the beginnings everything you can literally trace everything about men i hope god is speaking to us and i pray that i'm making sense hallelujah from that time every time satan found a man three things pastor three don't forget this please every time satan finds a man he's interested in three things number one the handing over of the will of that man to him number two the building of a system that is loyal to him the bible says and cain departed from the presence of god are we together and when he departed from the presence of god that means willfully he was no longer in submission to the authority of the kingdom and the bible says he built a city from that day every time satan finds men he's obsessed with building cities the tower of babel darius building babylon herod till tomorrow every time satan finds men his obsession is to build a system and a city that does not honor god this is the system we call babylon a representation of the antichrist system this is the system and the operation that controls our social environment that we call cosmos are we together now and satan has satan did that by programming a set of beliefs and an approach to life the bible calls it in one word aeon the thinking pattern that comes with the age so he says genesis i mean romans chapter 12 and verse 1 i beseech you brethren therefore it says by the message of god that ye offer your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto god he calls it your reasonable act of worship or service verse 2 he says and be not conformed to this world it's not the word cosmos it's the word aeon there is a thinking pattern like a software that is, the, that is the mindset that is responsible for this architecture we call Babylon. So the three Hebrew boys said, no, we will not bow to you. Oh, king, we respect you. But when it has to do with building a government and a system that is not consistent with kingdom, we will not bow. And there was a consequence. I don't have the time to go to the book of Daniel and show you, but please do well to read the entire book of Daniel. You will find out, sir, that when it had to do, Satan never projects himself. He projects self. Once it is self, Satan is glorified, even if it is not him. You read Revelation 13, the same thing. Satan does not come out to say, I am Satan. He just says, anything that is not God is welcome nebuchadnezzar built whose image please talk to me whose image so the moment you find yourself magnifying and glorifying self don't ever be deceived it is still satan masquerading to an agency he has designed called self so when you notice as a man of god whilst you teach 
You don't just sit there and just religiously say as the spirit leads. You can bring teachings that dethrone self in people because every manifestation of self, I tell you, is Satan. When Cain built a city, he named it after his son to glorify himself. When Nimrod Cush in Genesis 11, theologically speaking, you know that Nimrod killed his father and married his mother, Semiramai, who is purported to be the queen of heaven. Are we together now? Yes, that's theology. Nimrod Cush gathered the people. They went to the land of China and he says, go to come. Let us build brick and mortar and let us build a city whose top will reach the heavens. Now, there are many theological debates whether that was a physical kingdom or spiritual kingdom one thing we know is that it was a threat because God himself came down to destroy it the fall of man is not just about sinning against God uh -uh. it's deeper than that the fall of man is not just about disobeying God the fall of man is an attempt to glorify self so just because you are free from sin does not mean the journey has finished there is the next assignment to dethrone self if we don't teach believers this the moment they, that's why we have many people in church who get born again and say i'm born again for 10 years now he becomes a deacon now he becomes a worker and you still see self you are not free until self dies no matter how how born again you are if self is still alive there is a legitimate ground for the devil to be glorified in and through your life are we blessed so man fell from that time all that we see happen listen carefully is a battle of two kingdoms right until Acts chapter 1 when Jesus rounded up his lecture please understand it doesn't matter whether you are talking about the poetic books, the five books of Moses, the Pentateuch, the poetic books, and, and the prophets, minor prophets, major prophets. Now you come to all of the other books, Gideon, all of those characters is just the passage of time, the real story. From the time man fell, there was a battle, and it's been a battle of two kingdoms replaced by different actors but the same battle what is the battle light over darkness the kingdom of light and an antichrist system when god entered a covenant listen carefully when god entered a covenant with father abraham and that covenant brought out a people a people who were carved out immediately satan knew that the savior who would redeem the people must come out of these people israel became a threat everywhere they went nobody cared whether they hurt or anybody or not once you were a jew satan suspected that the savior that seed that will bruise the head of the serpent would come out of there You now see what happened when Jesus made that declaration finally. Because Satan kept suspecting people. A prophet will arise, he will suspect, is that the Savior? Then the prophet will die. A prophet will arise, someone else will arise, and Satan will keep suspecting. Finally, John the Baptist arose, and he, Satan kept speaking to the scribes and the Pharisees. Are you the one to come? Why was he interested about that one to come? John further confused them. Who are you? He said, I'm the voice of one crying in the wilderness. What kind of description is that? Finally, a young virgin is minding her business one day, celebrating like every other lady, preparing they were going to see her parents. They had even given a down payment. She got up one morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Getting ready to prepare herself and listen to the lectures from the rabbi. An angel suddenly appears. Bringing glad tidings. And he says, you are favored. And she wondered, what sort of salutation is this now? She had read that once upon a time, Emmanuel would come. 
she had read that once upon a time would come the burden this corruption this bondage of corruption upon people will be lifted it's amazing how many things you have read in the bible that you don't know you are the one who will fulfill it let me tell you this just because it is in the bible and it was written before you were born does not mean everything has been fulfilled there are still prophecies to be fulfilled and can i tell you the truth this is not some motivation one day you will read where it was written concerning you as a person you will know with all humility that this description is me when Nigeria was written in the Bible, Isaiah 18, Nigeria was not yet am amalgamated. Lord Lugard was not even born, yet it was written there that a strong and a people, a great people will come whose rivers divide. This is a prophecy. Find out how many things were written when Jesus went in Luke chapter 4. He read the messianic prophecy as a little boy when the scribes were teaching him. He was looking and said, my God, if these people know that this is the person who has come to fulfill it. He said, this day is this scripture fulfilled. Are we blessed? Yes, and so he told the woman, he said, you are highly favored. All of a sudden, you will bear a child, this and that. How shall these things be? She said, seeing that I know not a man. And he said, the power of the highest will come upon you. Now, from that time, it was, it was a major controversy. Imagine what happens. You say you are a virgin. And all of a sudden your stomach starts protruding. Joseph said, I'm an honorable man. I don't mean to embarrass you. Hold my hands. Let me go back to your parents and quietly hand you over to them. And the angel appeared and said, no, don't do that. There is prophecy manifesting. It will be an honor for you to be the father of this child in the earth now from a human standpoint now watch this i'm taking out time to show you this thing because brothers and sisters if we do not know this we will preach many sermons but we'll never get the message that represents the mandate that saves why jesus why salvation why evangelism why church planting why should we pray for crowds to come because we have, it's the same body of Christ that this problem has been tearing people for years. Other people say, why are you talking about increase? We're okay like that. Other people are saying, you are, you are saying we're okay because you are, we're wicked. I'm trying to solve that problem because if we do not understand this, many of the things we do in church will now not make sense. Why do you have to organize a conference like this? To what end? Pastor Dele, did you have to do it? You already have the revelation. What compelled you to inconvenience yourself and spend so much when you understand this great assignment? My brothers and my sisters, it will supply fire in you that will wake you up in the night. When others are sleeping and clapping and saying you are building churches, you will act like you just got born again. There is a fire that will be set up in your bones because you know that there is a message that is bigger than reputation. There is a, you will bear the reproach of Christ with honor and joy and not settle for this mundane deceptions that continue to deceive people are we together yeah. Satan when he meets a man he's interested in three things number one turning your heart totally against the government of the Christ number two using you to build a system or to be part of a system that is totally anti-christ and he does that by introducing a set of beliefs and values it's a system he uses the word and does something to your mind that way you know that evangelism alone is not going to change men because those men sin is only one of the problem there is still a software at work in them that even when they are saved they are not free it is for this reason he gave unto some apostles and prophets. Are you seeing why I'm taking doctrine? Because the assignment of doctrine is to now, like a baby who just got born. Do you leave the baby like that? I'm not a woman, but when, when a baby comes out, you, you say congratulations, you arrived. And No, there is a lot that goes on. Is that true? You have to wash that baby 
and start over a course of time there are vaccinations the baby receives there are all kinds that baby is healthy yet there are still vaccines because you are aware that there are certain diseases around that will not spare that baby the reason why our harvest continues to rot in is because we keep preaching and piling people at the gate of the church at the gate of the kingdom but they do not grow in doctrine We keep ordaining people who are immature in the spirit just because of the flamboyancy of gifts or the charismatism that surrounded their being born again. And this is one of the reasons why we have some of the unfortunate things that we have in the body of Christ. There's all kinds of gifted people with profound levels of immaturity. Is God helping us? So let's tie this very quickly. What is the cosmos? This social system. What is it about? Because the Bible says in Psalm 24, the earth is the Lord and its fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. Four things. Number one, the earth. Number two, the fullness. Number three, the cosmos. Number four, the people. The earth is the Lord's. Number two, the fullness, the riches, the blessings, the resources. All the contention of hell is for these four things. Please, you have to understand this. This is what we are contending against. This is what Satan wants. He wants the earth. He wants the fullness. He wants to control the mindset of the system. And he wants to control the people. So the Bible tells us the earth is the Lord's. Look up, please. Our corporate mandate is not just to touch the people that dwell therein alone the reality of the gospel and our mandate if done efficiently it will affect the earth it will affect the fullness it will affect the world it will affect them that dwell therein any gospel that does not touch these four areas any dimension of ministry that does not seek to enthrone Christ in and above these four spheres is an ineffective gospel are we together please look up keep that scripture there please the earth number one god is not leaving the earth in isolation it is still his property and if he has made us stewards then there must be something no wonder he said you are the light of the world you are what the salt of the earth so he's still interested in the earth number two the fullness thereof the riches this settles once and for all the fact that if God desires to make us managers over his resources, we must not allow religion push us to believe that being a steward of God's resources, the fullness belongs to the Lord and the saints must occupy those positions. This is where things like influence is very powerful because it gives you access to the systems, the structures, the resources. Resources are very powerful. They help to amplify ideas. Number three, it says the world, the world, the world, the spiritual sphere and the controlling mindset. This is very powerful. Listen to me, please. Everybody, almost every, I don't know how many billion people today are on social media. Pastor Dele, whether it's, um, I was asking my people when we're just grabbing a meal quickly and I was telling them what social media platform is the most powerful. I asked them what social media platform is the most disorganized. They didn't even know why I was asking. I said, which one is the most organized? And which one is the most, um, you know, maybe seductive or deceptive? I can't remember what I asked them. I wanted to know. You know why? Because for a long time, believers have not been interested in the mind control systems that come on earth. The mind control systems is what will institutionalize Christ across every strata of human activities. We cannot focus on, I, I hope what I've been sharing is now making sense. This is, there is a real battle, hear me. Every man of God listening, following, please give us that scripture again. Psalm 24 verse 1 is a major assignment. It's a battle for four things. Number one, the earth. Number two, the fullness. 
Number three, the mind control systems. Number four, the inhabitants. Let me tell you, remove these four things. Satan will not have any business with any man again. This is the reason why we wake up in the morning. This is the reason why we go to bed. This should be the reason why you go to school. This should be the reason why you get married. This should be the reason why you have children. If, if, if this, these four dimensions, your life is not contributing to revealing and enthroning Christ above them, you are not being useful on earth as far as kingdom is concerned. Is God helping us? Please look up the earth. There are people who will be sent to be the preservers of earth. There are people who will be sent to be preservers of the fullness. An example, Joseph. There are people who will be sent to be the manipulators of the mind control systems. To battle it at the realm of the mind. To see to it that the value systems that are inculcated and are transferred. Today there are things you cannot do if you are media. Is that true? Mainstream media. Why? Because there is a mind control system. The king of Tyre himself sits there. The fullness of the earth. You say you want to do business and glorify Christ and say you are a kingdom financier and you have drawn a line that will be more than your intellect. You will see forces fighting beyond the realm of business. And you say, I mean, I'm just a businessman. In the devil's mind, he does not know the difference between a preacher, a businessman, a politician. There's only one thing he's checking. Is there something in your life that has a bearing that will enthrone Christ? The attack will be the same. He will attack a preacher like he will attack a businessman because you are equally vulnerable to him. Or I mean, you are, you are equally dangerous as far as his agenda is concerned. That means businessmen should receive the training of preachers. That means politicians should receive the training of pastors. When we say it's a pastor's conference, in reality, it's everybody's conference. Provided you are sent to preserve the earth, the fullness, the mind control system in the cosmos, and the inhabitants, you must be trained. You must be mentored. Can we pray in the spirit again? Your kingdom reigns, please pray. Yes, it reigns above all, above all. Your kingdom reigns, yes, it reigns above all, above all. Your kingdom reigns above all. Please sit down. Just give me a few minutes and we'll tie it up for this night. Let me advise you, please, get all the teachings. Get, this is not an issue of I have had. Just get all these teachings from the beginning of this conference. And please in the name of Jesus Christ and in the name of honesty, just sit down and listen again. The cosmos. There is a battle that many believers are not aware of. The battle for these four things that we showed you has made many die. The battle for this has brought a lot of tragedy to people. People have lost loved ones because of this. The earth, the fullness, the mind control system, and to as far as this agenda is concerned. There's no time to talk about the ecclesia. According to Matthew 16 and verse 18, maybe I'll just wrap up with the mandate and then we'll pray. Let's understand a bit about kingdom advance.
but just give me a minute or two to just touch on that in Matthew chapter 16 and verse 18 a few verses before 18 Jesus was with his disciples and he perceived they were murmuring and arguing about several things people because at that point they were already confused about who he was in all fairness they had worked with Jesus and as he was drawing close to his passion he began to confuse them the more so they started debating and asking heated conversations and Jesus said something he said um, gentlemen who do men say that I the son of man is they were so excited finally you're asking this question yourself because we've been asking it too some say you are Elias some say you are one of those prophets some say you are some reincarnation and he smiled he said for you now who do you say that I am this is a lesson we can preach all night just on that message you can never receive from a man you do not discern who he is even if he's your pastor you can be around him for many years but you will have to discern because he said flesh and blood does not reveal this to you that revelation does not exist in the realm of flesh and blood you will have to be assisted by the spirit Peter spoke up and said I know who thou art he says thou art Christ he was right he never called him Jesus thou art Christ the son of the living God and then the next verse he said Jesus answered and said blessed are thou Simon son of Jonah he said for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto you but my father which is in heaven now next verse and I say unto you look at Jesus piecing together the tools that will make up this entity he says upon this rock what rock age long controversy again upon Peter no sir what is the rock strategy upon this strategy I will build my church and I will build it with such an architecture that if allowed to be properly built the gate of hell that means we verify the quality of what we are building by allowing the gate of hell to test it if the gate of hell prevails over your church and your life something was wrong with your architecture the Bible says if you allow me build it ask Job when he built it Satan came back with a testimony that as I went round the earth I saw that man and yet I could not touch him something is wrong with the way we are teaching and mentoring and raising people that's why it makes Satan look so powerful if we allow the architecture Makaru Mashiata. listen building the heavenly tabernacle Moses was given a vision of the tabernacle in heaven and he said reproduce it Moses was meticulous to make sure every peg was built according to pattern it is our refusal to subscribe to spiritual patterns that keeps make of our building come and I will show you the lamb's wife he said he showed me a city that was equal in length in breadth in height that is the lamb's wife any other shape any other architecture that was imported from another source is not the bride of Christ and not the lamb's wife so when I know this as I teach as a man of God I go back to the vision I saw and watch whether what I'm building is looking like it even if that building is clapping for me I must look beyond the applause am I building according to pattern because the only person who verifies is not God himself is the gate of hell the gate of hell was allowed as a verification system two men built upon a rock one built upon a rock one upon sand for both of them the storms came the pandemic has called us back to our knees and back to our books the pandemic sincerely has any man of God who sincerely loves God and desires the agenda of God should know that the pandemic revealed major loopholes in the buildings that we have been celebrating for years and decades one year of a test we back respectfully we should pat ourselves at the back but not do it for too long because there is a lot there are carpenters that need to arise 
and say, uh -uh, we need to chisel this again. Who put this rock here? This rock did not look like it was chiseled well. We must be able to love the architecture and the building more than our reputation. Because chiseling that building, you will receive a tax for it. But do you have the stamina and the spirit to stay until it fits in? What then is the mandate? Please write this down. Kariso bradiga suziatalas The church, let me, let me say this. The church is not just a gathering of people, Pastor Dele. The church is not the people. God's original idea about the church is a strategy that's invented by the intelligence of God himself. The only strategy that sustains the ability to enthrone Christ is called the church. The church is not the gathering of people necessarily. The original idea of the church is a strategy. The only strategy that sustains the ability. Do you know what that means? We are crying and telling the government they are not helping us. Now, I'm not saying government should be irresponsible. We are crying over several people. Whereas the only strategy that God built himself. Even the earthly government was not built by God. It's men that desired it. Is that true? Beginning from, they wanted kings for themselves. But the church was God's own idea. Can I tell you this? Hear me. I know the church has been mocked because of the things that are happening all across. I know that people have downplayed the church. Whenever you mention the church, it looks like you are, we are a nuisance to civilization. But believe me, I tell you, the church will be the last entity standing. When all is said and gone and Babylon is fallen. And Babylon and that she goddess who has merchandised through her, her harlotry with the kings of the earth and empowered them in one hour. When everything falls, the church will be standing exalted as that bride of Christ. We are not weak. No. No. The governments may look like they are bullying us because we have deviated from the pattern that produces power, that produces consistency. We have allowed our emotions to interrupt covenant sense. So I pray only when I want to. Unfortunately, the devil will manipulate your emotions such that in a year you want to only two times. But when your prayer life becomes a covenant, it has nothing to do with emotions again. It's like having a misunderstanding with your husband and refusing to cook for him. That's not a covenant sense. You see, husbands and wives quarrel and yet they still call the woman Mrs. His son name, she still answers because it is covenant, not emotions. Mm. Men who stood in the face of the sword and even though their emotions wanted to come, they said, no way. This is more than emotions. For, for me to live is Christ. And it says if I die, this is a language this generation does not like. We like convenience. Anything that is, is massaging emotions. And we wonder why the church is not powerful. Please write this down. The name given to the assignment and the corporate mandate of believers there are twofold dimensions to this but generally the mandate is generally called kingdom advance the mandate that was given to the church is called kingdom advance what does this mean write it down please if you care kingdom advance refers to the deploying of every and any scriptural means the deploying of every and any scriptural means to the end that Christ be enthroned and revealed the deploying of any and every scriptural means to the end that Christ be enthroned and revealed first in the hearts of men and then across every strata of human activities. This is the mandate. The enthroning, the revealing 
and the enthroning of Christ and his purposes first across the hearts of men this is through a mechanism that we call evangelism and then across every strata remember Psalm 24 don't forget it Pastor Dele was talking powerfully about the Psalms there's so much hidden in that Psalm and the strategy that reclaims the strata is called influence it will not evangelism alone will not bring back the Christ it is a combination of evangelism and influence that will bring the global harvest so the coming move of God will not be like any other move that has happened it will not just be packing up crusade grounds no this time around it will be a combination of people in the marketplace people who are sitting upon several mountains all together like a coordinated force this is what the bible says in romans chapter 8 and verse 18 it says for i reckon i come to terms with the fact that the sufferings of this present time it says that it is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in you it says for the earnest expectation of creation awaits creation was told something that they are still waiting for if it is true that creation is alive then there is something it had and is still waiting for it the bible captures that experience he calls it the manifestation of the sons of god it says for creation itself was subject to bondage not willingly adam brought them into that mess but right now there is the bondage of corruption that the sons in light will deliver creation from not men the gospel was not supposed to affect men alone because it was not only man that fell the entire creation too fell plants fell animals fell the ecosystem fell because man fell what is the mandate first peter 2 verse 9 we're wrapping up first peter 2 verse 9 he says you are a chosen generation hmm. look at all these definitions a chosen generation that means you are not this already tells you you are not the only generation out of the many generations by God's predetermined counsel you are a chosen generation it says you are a royal priesthood you are a holy nation a peculiar people and there is only one thing that makes you all this the privilege of being called out of darkness and being given a mystery that the bible calls marvelous light this is what makes you this access to a body of spiritual truth that has been hidden in other dispensations but now by the spirit of grace is being revealed to a chosen generation you have access to a body of spiritual information listen this is the ministry of the fivefold or fourfold as you may call it they are granted by the spirit of grace this marvelous light paul calls it in ephesians 3 the fellowship of the mystery it's like occultism you were initiated to partake of a body of truth so that you will communicate it and then alongside that mandate he was given a grace in chapter 3 and verse 9 that this grace is able to make all men see it's a grace that was given to him you are able to see what he's saying so that you can step into the fullness of that why are we gathered here so that we will understand these matters of the kingdom these are some of the things jesus spent 40 days teaching it's amazing that in those 40 days he truly did not perform any miracle that means compared to those weightier matters even the miraculous is a very very inferior thing the miraculous only finds its credence when those truths are understood whatever jesus did for that 40 days should represent the highest priorities of the kingdom miracles were not there 
fame was not there. He didn't even mention his name and say, I'm Jesus, I've resurrected. Verify that it's me. Most of the things we do today in church were not captured in that 40 days lecture. Whatever Jesus did in that 40 days, we should do it because prophetically, we have less than 40 days. So if Jesus spent 40 days, we should be able to quickly know his priorities and spend our lives learning and teaching these truths so that believers will rise. Why do you get up in the morning? Because the Christ needs to be revealed, the Christ needs to be enthroned, first in the hearts of men and across every strata of human activities. This is why you should marry. If God cannot find kingdom come in your marriage, that marriage is not bad, but is useless as far as everything finds its relevance, not in the activity itself, but the degree to which it is connected to kingdom come. So if this preaching, notice, do you know, many of you study history, whether as a formal education or just from your passion, many of the activities that were recorded in scripture, there were other historic activities that happened concurrently, but the Bible does not capture them. The Bible is only interested in which activities brought kingdom. Any activity that happened through history and kingdom was not found there, in God's mind, it shouldn't even make this book. Wow. That means if God were to edit my life, You'll be surprised that my life will only be full of three chapters. As old as you think you are, only three chapters worth of kingdom. Every other thing that has happened will not be captured there. There's gonna be a great awakening. Oh yes, it will happen. There's gonna be a great revival in our land. There's gonna be a great awakening And everyone who calls on Jesus They will be saved So why should people go and preach, Pastor Dele? Is it because there is pressure on the man of God to add members? Or is it because they are motivated by a mandate? Once upon a time, there was this story. And now Jesus came and died. Look the price he went through. As powerful as God is, he could not cast sin out of men. He couldn't use his might as the creator of the heavens and the earth to say, I, Elohim, I cast sin out of you. No, he had to become a man. Brothers and sisters, when you understand this, when you are preaching, the threat of your pastor is not what motivates you. The threat of making sure there must be members on Sunday. There is a passion. Whilst you are walking, your eyes is seeing the cross and the sacrifice. Do you know what the work of the cross is? It's like you are a professor. But because you are a professor alone, you felt so dissatisfied being a professor. You stripped yourself of being a professor and you went back and started from kindergarten but this time around every time you moved you invented a strategy before they gave you the PhD you say hold on you entered a covenant with people who did not go to that school as soon as they were given the PhD they were PhDs everywhere and the people don't know how they got PhD your sacrifice your desire to have all of them having PhD is what made you to strip yourself although you're a professor you started afresh again that's what Jesus did. He stripped himself of an office that he was, went back on earth and became it again. It doesn't make sense until you know that the only reason why he did that was he did not want to be alone. Hmm. You laid aside your majesty, gave up everything for me suffered at the hands of those you have created i really want to worship you my lord you have won my heart and i am yours forever and ever i will love you ah. 
You are the only one who died for me. You gave your life to set me free. So I lift my voice to you in adoration. This is why we spend our lives doing the things that we do. This is why a man can give up his business and say, I want to spend my life serving Jesus. This is why we can go to the hinterlands. I remember many years ago, I went to preach somewhere. It was not a very comfortable place at all. After I was done preaching, something happened to me. I don't know whether it was the water. My face broke out. I mean, it was, it was almost like a mess. I was looking like as if I was not a human being. That was when I learned about something called the reproach of Christ. This is our generation, huh? We need to sit down with the fathers to teach us. There is something we don't know at all that is making our Christian experience incomplete. We need to go back through history and find out what people went through to bring the gospel. Why would someone leave the U.S. and the comfort and everything and come into a land where people are eating themselves up? He's not even sure he will go back. When he was leaving, he told the wife, look, kiss me goodbye for the last time because you may not see me and some of them were right they never went back i read i watched the story of fiji island get the documentary of fiji island very small island but the revival in fiji island i watched it and it, it blessed me many years ago they killed some of the missionaries who came there butchered those people and killed them they were trying to present this jesus and they were people because behind them is satan i told you men cannot get angry on on their own beyond a certain threshold no no according to the kind of anger men have before the sun goes down they should stop being angry that's the one that even god approved because there is a dimension of that anger that is useful so god left it but that when a man sustains certain levels of rage and anger is being empowered by a spirit you see why the bible says by this shall all men know there is an evidence when you have love i hope i didn't stand here to just sound arrogant i'm sorry if, if for any reason you you perceive this but let me tell you this if the body and the bride we think would take on the world is the one that does not know these things we are teaching there will be a fatal defeat until we come back to mentor the body aright there are so many things we do not know i am telling you there are so many things we have not seen we must once again hold on to the four horns of the altar and lay down our pride and say, Lord, they call me a celebrity. I drop that nonsense right now and I focus on an agenda. God opened our eyes through the pandemic to see the, the amateurism in our building. Not to condemn us, but so that we will return with brokenness. There is no revival that does not start with genuine repentance. Repentance is not just repentance from sin. It's repentance from a wrong architecture, a disalignment. Let every man be careful how he build it. Because the fire will come to test our works. And when that fire blows upon our years of ministry, you will find out that 30 years, what will be left will not be equal to one week of impact. We must trust God for grace to redefine the parameters that spell success for us in this kingdom. We must trust God for a redefinition as a corporate people. It's time to mature. It's time to grow. It is to this end that he gave unto some apostles 
and some prophets and some evangelists and pastors and teachers. Why? For the maturing of the saints. So that the saints now being matured will do the work of the ministry to the end that all of us as a corporate entity will come into the fullness of the stature of the measure of Christ. The Bible says not to to and fro by every wind of doctrine and the slight of men wherein they lie to deceive. It's time to wake up. There are many things we need to wake up from. The thing about the school of the spirit is that God is patient enough. He will repeat the lessons even if it's for 40 years. God is a God of speed, but he does not rush. We need to sustain grace to stay. Every generation stayed till they got it right, except our own. We're in a rush for everything. A rush to be called this, to be called that, no. It is they that wait upon the Lord. And I trust that God put this as a burden in the heart of his servant, Pastor Dele, to be able to once again give the body of Christ a chance to say God is calling us to deeper levels. God is not calling us into a celebrity lifestyle of men of God. Thank God for that. There are dimensions of honor in the body and they must be accorded as needed but this marketing of flesh and this carnality that is eating of the body of christ eroding our focus and our concentration on the things that truly matter something is wrong i really want to worship you my lord you have won my heart and i am yours forever and ever i will love you you are the only one who died for me you gave your life to set me free so i lift my voice to you listen we must restore altar calls to the body of christ let me tell you this this is not just, when I say restore altar call, I don't just mean calling people after a sermon. It's more than that. The first thing that needs to be restored, when the fire was about to come, Elijah had to rebuild the altar again. We have eroded the altar of genuine evangelism. The motions are there, but the spirit and the revelation, desire to see Christ enthroned in hearts has vanished almost completely. And I'll tell you why it vanished. Because for many of us, that deep hunger and that passion and that pursuit for God is not even there in the first place. I'm not being judgmental. I hope you understand. We just need to push ourselves a little. That everyone God loves, he chastises. That the chastising of the Lord is proof. John chapter 15, he said, Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he will prune so that it will bear fruit again. We are going to round up. We have to stop tonight. But hear me. When you respond to this noble call, it's not just a call to be a pastor. It's not just to be a call to be a businessman. It's not just a call to be an apostle or a prophet. Those names are just titles that signify the geography of the assignment. They must not be exalted above the assignment. Let me round up with one scripture. John chapter 1 verse 6 and 7. Never forget this scripture for as long as you live. There was a man. That man was sent from God. Please keep that scripture there. Do you know what this means? That God's instruments for this assignment are men. It's just that those men are not born. Those men are not even called. Those men are sent. The men that God will use are not the ones who are called. Your calling is not unto ministry. Your calling is unto Jesus. When God calls you, he calls men to himself. Then he sends them to the world. God does not call men. Come, follow me. Not follow your assignment. Not follow church. The first object of your pursuit is God. 
the formula must be restored in the beginning god once you compromise on that formula you have no ministry again not in the beginning conference not in the beginning apostle in the beginning prophet in the beginning god if you want to see the fire that came in the days of elijah we will have to trust god for grace to rebuild the altar again god did not rebuild the altar for elijah it was within his power to rebuild the altar i have made up my mind that for as long as i live if god gives me the privilege and the grace to be alive i will see to it that i become a contributor to kingdom come there was a man born of a woman but sent from god don't let the date of birth confuse you don't let the color of the skin confuse you don't even let the name of the church confuse you don't let the ministerial title confuse you there was a man sent from god when he arrived on earth he needed a means of identification so they gave him a name and they called that name john and they called that name pastor daily are we together and they called that name you you have been so carried away with your name you have forgotten that you were sent next verse the same man came not for a service for a witness to bear witness of the light that through his witness so god sends men to men are you the strategy now god would never come down by himself uh -uh. he sends men to men so that men will come to God. The same came for a witness. Who is a witness? A validator of a claim. So that all men through him might believe. So he gives those men all the tools that they need to convince other men to believe. If it is wealth, he gives you. If it is influence, he gives you. If it is access, he gives you. Provided you continue to remember that they are only tools, including anointing. So your mind does not leave him and the assignment to focus now on anointing or to focus on church or to focus on fame or titles. Uh -uh. They are all tools to the end that men might believe. I call on everyone following from around the world and for those of us in the studio that in the next two minutes that we have, we are going to trust God for grace to re-examine our lives. I know we are men of God. I'm not asking you how many people you raised from the dead. I'm not asking you how many people you prophesied to. I'm not asking you how many wonderful sermons and how many, uh, what they call it now, those social media, likes, follows and all of that. No. It is a call, a renewal of passion, a renewal of hunger. There is a real devil out there with a determination to destroy the earth, destroy the fullness, supply a mind control system that will make men hate God institutionally and finally capture the inhabitants of the earth. And there are carpenters there are witnesses there are advocates there are men as mighty as god is he's depending on you and he's depending on me to be the ones who will be able to inexperience enthrone christ so that he will be king of kings indeed and lord of lords indeed this is the mandate this is why we wake up in the morning this is why we go to bed this should be why we ask god for wealth lord give me wealth teaching prosperity out of this context will only mislead people just talk to the lord in one minute while you are seated we have to wrap up we're going to stand to pray but just sit first let this be a re-examination a deep contemplation where men and women of God, ordained workers, people who are serving the purposes of the kingdom, I'd like you to, just in one minute, we used to sing 
a hymn those days in the seminary it says fading away like the stars of the morning it says thus will we pass from the earth and its toiling only to be remembered by what we have done in fact there used to be a hymn that would sing we say must i go and empty-handed must i meet my savior soul it says not one soul with which to greet him god does not need our gold uh -uh. he does not need our empire what he needs are the souls of men in one minute i'd like you to pray talk to the lord from the depth of your heart The Bible says, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, let there be a restoration of our hunger and our passion, a restoration to go back to the assignment of the kingdom, like Pastor Daly was saying. Please pray. Don't be tired. I know we've stretched ourselves. You are talking to the Lord, your maker. Just two minutes of deep reflection. Come and make my heart your home come and be everything i am and all i know search me through and through till my heart becomes a home hallelujah please listen I, I will try to see if it's possible um i think i think pastor Dele had given me was it a book about the revival the revival in night i think it's important if you can lay your hand i don't know how some of these materials there was one that um pastor david obuele gave me i would i would get the title and then because these are some of the resources that anybody who is really interested in God's program in this end time, there must be grace to lay your hands on some of these materials. The Bible says the things that are written are for time, that they are for our learning, so that we through the comfort of scripture might find hope. We will need to go back to history. Lord, they have joined the cloud of witnesses today, but they immortalize their impact by documenting their persuasions they captured dimensions of God revealed to them and they preserved it for generations to come. The Bible was written so that it could be preserved. We must become students of the spirit, like spiritual archaeologists, going back to find out how did God work with these people. But we must trust God from tonight. Some of us have our churches tomorrow, is Sunday service. By the grace of God, let's obtain grace to restore back this assignment that in all that we do the ultimate goal is to reveal Jesus and to glorify him first in the hearts of men and then across every strata of human activities and that the object of our pursuit is the earth the fullness the system and its thinking pattern and the inhabitants don't pursue men alone don't pursue fullness alone your heart must seek to capture these four dimensions the earth its fullness the mind control systems and the inhabitants thank you father for tonight in the name of jesus we pray that your word will find expression in our lives yet again spirit of truth we count on you to make these words true to make them alive in our hearts in the name of jesus i pray that these words will find a place in our hearts that satan would not come to steal them from our hearts but that these words will grow and produce fruits indeed fruits that abide a 30-fold 60-fold 
and even hundredfold harvest we give you all the glory and we pray that your kingdom come and your will be done in our lives and across our territory in the name of jesus christ amen and amen god bless you wow wow hallelujah i don't know what um we still have to take a question you may be seated. We should, we'll just take one question and um, we'll go. Please, can we have a music team? Let's, now, let me say this. This is very important. Like I said in the morning, we don't do ministry through cunning craftiness and we don't have any promise to any of our speakers as far when you come, this is what we're going to give you, this is what you get. God forbid, I will never, never be part of that. I have never gone to preach anywhere because of what I'll get. I've, not, I've never accepted an invitation because of what I'll get, and I've never turned down an invitation because of the perception of what I'll get. <laughs> you know, it's as a, well, I mean, it has never been. But there's a principle. And that's why every time we always have Pastor Sam, I always teach that principle, and not just about him personally. Every time we host a minister, I, I want us to give. And you know what we do is that we turn all these things given to our guests. So it's not for us. And for those who are watching online, for those who are in the studio, you've been, you've been blessed by the ministry of this man. See this as an opportunity to give back. Let him that is taught in the word. Galatians says, communicate unto him that teaches in all good things. And it's within that context in outside God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man sows in this regard, that is what he will reap. So, that's what it is. So, we just want to take a song, a worship song. And can they put the account on the screen? And let me also say to everyone watching online, that everything received tonight, everything is going to be it's for Apostle Selma, so it's a seat for him. He, has, he didn't ask for this, so we're not doing this because he asked for it. We're doing this because that is what the Lord has asked us to do, and it's the right thing to do. And it's also part of the meeting. Forget that the seat principle has been bastardized, but that doesn't mean it's not valid. It is as valid. And, and you, we have to do that. And that is when you get the fullness of, of the teaching of the ministry. So the account is on the screen, and like we said, we're people of integrity, everything received. So if you are there, you've been looking for an opportunity to communicate with Apostle Selma. So just leave it here. you can put Selma, whatever. And, um, and if you are writing a check, you can also make it payable to, we'll, we'll turn everything over to him. Praise God forevermore. Just short worship song. Jesus. You are my center, my hope, my treasure, found in you. How sing your praises forever, my love, my life, I give to you, say. Jesus, you are my center, my hope, my hope, my treasure, found in you. I'll sing your praises forever, my love, my Your home, my worship. I'll stay right here where I'm welcome. You can build your home, my worship. I'll stay, I'll stay right here. Say, I'll stay, I'll stay right here where I'm welcome. Just wait, you can build your home, my worship. I'll stay. I'll stay right here. Amen. Thank you very much. So, Apostle, just one question because, thank you, we've asked people to send questions, but um, <laughs> after the kind of teaching we've had tonight, you know, as I sat there, I was just processing so many things. <laughs> and 
So at some point, I just said, don't let me write notes again. <laughs> I'll listen to the message again, at least about four or five times. Then I'll be able to capture some of those things because I just wrote, I wrote, and I'm like, no, let's wait. So that is to tell every one of us, just like he said also, you need to listen to this message. So there's a young man out there, Apostle, who is trying to start out a ministry. How do they who say so much? So that it doesn't become intimidation. <laughs> How do they come? Trumbo is trying to start out a ministry, who wants to do it right, just as all those things I've said. How, what should be the framework? How do they start out? How do they uh, make sure that they do it right? What in God that could provide some kind of uh, spiritual guidance and validity uh, to somebody that is just, so we're looking at startups now. Because after hearing things like this, everyone is careful, especially those who have not started. Uh, they want to start very well. They want to make sure they do it well. What are the parameters? How can a young man cleanse his way, a young minister now, to make sure that not only are you starting very well, that same power is there, and I doubt it all, you fulfill the purpose and understand the assignment. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Can I stand? Is that fine? Thank you very much. I... Please, whether or, not you are, whether or not you are able to make it tomorrow, do well to get tomorrow's session. Doctrines, please. The answer would be there, but, but then I'll just give for now. Generally speaking, um, let me answer it broadly. Generally speaking, anytime you want to approach anything in life, your first assignment is to refer to the pattern of that occurrence in Scripture because Scripture is the boundary of God's commitment to men. So whether it is business, whether it is ministry, are we together? Clearly, the Bible says to follow them. So followership is involved to becoming. For me and I will make it says, follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise. For someone who wants to start up in ministry, um, depending on the peculiarity of his situation, somebody may be in, let's say, maybe an Islamic nation and may not have access to dedicated mentorship. I need to be fair on those people too because we are trusting God that the global harvest will even reach those regions. But generally speaking, I expect that it is in the process of mentorship and building that that person begins to discern the unique expression of God's call. And I'm saying this now with respect to what we know to be the fivefold. We've taught now that everyone is a minister, but uniquely to ministry, you know, the gospel. Remember that Samuel was under the mentorship of Eli. That was what even helped him to lie down close to the ark. It was under the supervision of Eli. And God used the voice of Eli to call Samuel. Otherwise, Samuel would not run to Eli if it was a big voice that sounded like the voice of an, an angel. Are we together? So I think that um, the, the first thing that is required if you want to be in ministry is to allow yourself to be built and to be transformed. Um, having that desire is wonderful. But there are many times the Bible will say, right, these things are for an appointed time. That means you note them and know that I have the call of God, but we must settle down to be trained and to be mentored, right? And then to study, to really press into God, and to be guided. Most times when people start nurturing this passion, they don't even know what dimension of ministry, whether it is prophetic, whether it is this. Usually, it stems out from a life of prayer, a life of consecration, a life of service towards God. It is as you, and, and, and service in the church also, as you continue to do this, God, by his spirit, will begin to channel that individual to hold roles, maybe in that church, that build leadership, that build a sense of responsibility. That person becomes maybe a prayer leader. One day they can give him an opportunity, lead five minutes prayer. All of these little, little things, they are like spiritual industrial attachments. They help him to make his mistake. You know, the whole psychology is built there because ministry also involves, there's a psychological component to it. You are talking to men. Are we together? So the pattern I would give anyone is number one, 
the moment you find out and you sense the call of God upon your life, whether or not you sense the call, it is important to not just be in church but to serve because service is one of the clearest platforms that help men evolve. Without service, there are many things you cannot learn. There are many things you cannot know. The disciplines that make for ministry is best inculcated at the point of service. If you are a worker in church, every week you are in church, you are doing something, handling one responsibility or the other. You see, there are brethren in the church who can help you. The pastor may not have all the time to attend to you, depending on the size of the church, but there are people within the group, the department, that you can say, look, I had this dream, and someone says, ah, don't joke with this dream. You see that now. Um, now, there are many ways, according to scripture, where the call, or what we call the call now, of a man is revealed to him. Number one, dreams and visions. Very clearly, we have seen through scripture, people like Jeremiah, even while he was a little child, dreams and visions. Number two, prophetic confirmations. There are times that God just comes and confirms prophetically. Um, number three, service. Very strangely, there's no record in scripture that Elisha was supposed to be a prophet. Elisha was a farmer. They were sons of the prophet. The next prophet should come out of them. But Elijah came to Elisha, hit his mantle and Elijah followed him until he received a double portion. You see, so sometimes service. Um, I, I, I want to do justice to the question, but I don't want to stretch time again because to do that, we may need to touch a bit on the idea of the will of God, the perfect will of God, the predeterminate counsel of God. Um, in the realm of the spirit, there are people who can take on the bishopric of others from scripture because God respects the will of men. If I don't touch this, we may not really understand that. That means if God has earmarked an assignment for me, I can choose as an act of my will to refuse, and he will respect it. But that vacuum, I will not punish his agenda just because I refused. So he can raise somebody. What God does is to find somebody with stamina. He has built stamina even beyond his assignment and add this assignment to that person. Or God will raise another person under the tutelage of someone he trusts and commit this to him. An example is Judas. An example is Mary. There's no prophecy that the name of the Virgin is Mary. Uh -uh. The Spirit of God kept hovering around the region where Jesus would be born, looking for all the virgins that were available, and he found the requirement in that woman, Mary. Mary would have refused. She said, be it unto me. If she refused, God would have to go on another project to look for another person, and the mother of Jesus would be called something else. Are we together? So there is a dynamics to it. There are people who are preordained to work in certain things. But there are people through the sacrifice of alignment, their alignment qualifies them to be given mandates that was not their original assignment. So I, I have to, you, you see why I say it's a bit complicated? Because there are many variations based on other people like Apostle Babalola who was in the forest. They started having all these encounters. Now, the template... If you follow his way today, many people will miss God. Still in it, following that template. So we have to first refer to the Bible. That's why I talk of doctrines. Doctrines means God's predefined pathway. There will always be exemptions based on the unique dealings. However, when we teach, we don't teach personalized dealings. You don't lead the body through personalized dealings. The margin of error is very wide. So we focus on doctrines. Doctrines now gives the predefined pathway. So according to scripture, the highest number of people who were called, how were they called? Look at the disciples of Jesus who became the apostles of the Lamb. None of them had a vision and saw themselves following Jesus. So we know that the, the, doctrine, of follow, or the doctrine of followership is God's authorized pathway to stewardship and to greatness. Are we together now? haven't explained to you all those auxiliary ways because the highest amount of people who were called at a time were the 12 disciples and the apostles and the margin of error was just one person, Judas. We see that the remaining left. The nation of Israel, it was through followership they came out of Egypt and even got to the promised land. So the recommended pathway is that you must become part of a body of believers. 
and then receive training, receive building. If it's possible, if you have a school of ministry around your area where you can be part of, it is very healthy to be part of it. And whilst you are training and serving, it's a mystery great by serving, not just by being aware of our ambition, because service does a lot of things. Are we together now? Yes. So you, almost any man of God will tell you his track record of service, serving a lot of people. I've shared a few of my stories. You can get in our last interview. You see that I, was, I used to play keyboard. I started this apostolic ministry today by playing keyboard. Playing keyboard for some of the people who were in prison ministry who would later preach for Obasanjo. And then many other things. So there has to be an, a, an antecedence and all of that. So my recommended pathway, aside from the unique dealings of the spirit that may happen to a few people, is follow the path of service. Be planted in an assembly of God's people. Find a spiritual platform that is committed to teaching and training and maturing believers. And then be part of that body of believers. Serve. Find a department. Serve. Serve sincerely and faithfully. Then if you have access to a Bible school or a place of training, submit yourself to it. Very, very important. And then allow God to build you, to mature you. He will continue to give you platforms here and there. I don't know if you want me to talk about branching out in ministry. Did you mean that or just the... Okay, yes, because if we talk of branching out, maybe it's something, another question, because there are, there are ethics to it. It's something that must be understood. Are we together? But generally speaking, you sense the call of God upon your life. Document your experiences. Don't waste them. You may not understand them at the moment, but they will connect to something God is doing in the future. So followership service, mentorship, training are the pathways, doctrinally speaking, that helps a man become a man of God. God bless you, sir.